One of the number one reasons why women struggle with dating and relationships today is that they choose men who are not ready for anything real. Ladies, there are lots of great relationship-ready men out here. However, you need to learn how to choose them. I wrote this book to teach you how to do just that. Get your copy of Choose Well, A Simple Formula to Determine the Best Man for You on Amazon today. Good morning. <clears throat> All right, I overslept. I have a I have an appointment this morning at nine o'clock and I gotta get to my mom's house and let the dogs out and deal with them real quick. But I just wanted to jump on. This video was actually requested by someone on YouTube and they wanted excuse me, I haven't had any coffee, any tea this morning, but I still got my morning voice. Um, but they were talking about, you know, dating someone, being in a new relationship with someone or dating someone. And good morning. Yes. Happy Saturday. Um, and they were talking all about, you know, how to develop trust, how to build trust and, you know, letting people know that when you have certain behaviors, right, when you have certain behaviors like leaving your phone in the car, certain behaviors like, you know, flipping your phone over, <clears throat> having your phone on silent. Um, what else did they mention? <clears throat> Excuse me. But a big part of this journey <laughs> that everybody is on with dating and trying to find a healthy relationship is you have to trust, but you have to be trustworthy. And we don't talk enough about that. Be trustworthy. Be a person who is open, who is honest, who is transparent, and who is vulnerable. It's the transparency that a lot of people struggle with. And I need you to understand that if you can't do those four things, you are going to struggle in your relationships. And that's whether you're a man or a woman. So this morning... It goes both ways, <laughs> since y'all love saying that. I got to move my phone because the sun is out and my phone is going to overheat. But this goes both ways. So if you are a man and you struggle with being transparent, what does that look like? It looks like you're on a date with someone, you're, you're sitting beside your person in the car or whatever. Your phone rings. Okay, this is what transparency looks like. Some of y'all are not familiar with this because y'all y'all say it's controlling. It's controlling, you know, for you to be transparent. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're just not transparent. Okay. But you're riding in the car, you're out on a date, you're in the house, and y'all are watching a movie. Your phone rings. And Maybe you are not going to answer because you're with your person, right? Maybe you're not going to answer because you're with your person. This is what transparency looks like, though. So say you're a guy. Your phone rings and you go, you look at the phone and in front of your person, you say, oh, that's Dave. I'll get back to him. I'll call him back. That's what transparency looks like. You announce, this is who's calling, <laughs> I'm going to get back to them. Oh, that's my mom. I'll get back to her. Oh, that's my sister. I'll, I'll give her a call back. Oh, that's my daughter. I'll call her back. Y'all don't know how to do that. Like, can I be honest? This happened to me where I was in the car with somebody, you know, in the house with somebody or whatever. And their phone rings, their phone dings, and no words are said, right? No words are said. <laughs> Nothing is said. It's just like an ignoring of the phone, ignoring of the notification or whatever, and we just keep talking. But transparency is required, okay? You should be able to be open, honest, transparent, and vulnerable with your person. And if I'm being honest, a lot of y'all don't, you know, you don't know how to do that. You weren't raised with that. That's a big part of it. So a lot of people that I talk to men and women, men and women, women do it too. Women do it too. 
Women do it too. Y'all's phone goes off, your phone dings, your phone vibrates, and you act like you didn't hear it. You act like it didn't happen. You turn your phone over. You put your phone in your bag. So everybody does it. Okay? Uh, but here's what I have been told. Well, that, that feels very controlling. That feels like the person is trying to control my every move, and that feels controlling. Or they'll say... Yeah, I, I didn't see that coming up or I didn't, you know, I didn't see that, you know, I didn't see that modeled. I didn't see that coming up. So, you know, you're basically doing, you know, what you saw, right? You're basically doing what you know to do or what you saw. You didn't see people move in a way that was trustworthy. You didn't see people move in a way that was transparent. Like, I don't have nothing to hide, right? And... I mean, that's, I'm going to be honest, especially in the black community. <laughs> and boy, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be radically honest in this live. You ready? In the black community, a lot of us, my family included, so my mom's family, my dad's family, we lived on secrecy. Like secrecy was the order of the day. And that's where it comes from. Black families are full of secrets. They are full of secrets. They're full of hiding. They're full of lies. If I could be honest, you got so-and-so that's been sleeping with so-and-so or so-and-so got a second family across town or so-and-so touched so-and-so, but we can't talk about that. We got to put, we got to sweep that under the rug. Uncle so-and-so is weird, is odd, is the weirdo of the family or uh, aunt so-and-so drinks a little too much at the cookout. We're full of secrets. We're full of lies. That's that's our community. That's the black community 101. Is we are full of secrecy. And that's where a lot of us get it. You know, we're raised in a culture of keeping secrets. And that was one of the things I remember, you know, once I was an adult, I was like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, not doing it. Not doing it, not having no secrets. Not having no lies, going to live very transparently, going to live very open and very honest. And, you know, tell my kids stuff, talk to my kids. I tell them things that's age appropriate. So I talk to my, I talk to my kids their whole life age appropriate. And as they got older, I've shared more and more and more. Now, now that my children are adults, it's, it's, it's no holes barred in my house. No holes barred. I talk openly and freely about everything, okay? I Because I don't have nothing to hide. I don't have nothing to hide. I've told my daughter some things that happened, you know, when I was young, and, and it's it's basically a cautionary tale. That's the reason, that's the main reason why I tell. I tell my daughter about some things that happened to me as a cautionary tale. Like, hey, don't do this. Don't let this happen to you. Don't be naive don't be gullible don't be foolish we need more of that in our community that will save a lot of us that will save a lot of us and our children heartache and i could go off on a tangent on uh my generation and and before my generation but even some millennials, I'll be honest, the Gen Xers, the millennials, you know, they have kids that are adults. Gen Xers, we have kids that are adults. And a lot of us, we have, um, we're, we are, that's what I'm going to say, we are failing our young people. We are failing our young people. It's so weird because we're so caught up in wanting to do, do what they do. We're so caught up in wanting to compete with them. I'm going to uh, I'm going to string together a video today, a reel, and I'm going to post it about the BET Awards and what the women wore and, you know, everything that happened at the BET Awards. And I know I'm late to the party, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it today. And just like this, this is this is where we are. This is where we are. Gen X is Gen X wants to be the Gen Z. Millennials want to be Gen Z. They want to keep up with them. They want to do what they're doing. And, and they're not guiding and directing. There's no guidance, no direction, no role modeling of what class and elegance and style 
and coos, as my grandmother used to say, that's a, that's an old school word. Look up coos. Okay, that's gone. That's gone. We're we're following them. We're trying to do what they do. We're following them. We're following their foolishness. So we have kind of we we really that's that's a big reason why I do what I do. Somebody has got to tell them. Somebody has got to warn them. Somebody has got to teach them. Y'all, I'm not trying to be 20. I'm not trying to be 25. I'm not trying to be 35 or 40. I am the age I am. I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of my generation. Oh my gosh, some of the best things in our in our society came out of my generation. I will forever be proud to be a Gen Xer. I mean, I'm so proud. But what I look like trying to follow a millennial, what I look like trying to follow a Gen Z, that's insane. What I look like trying to compete with my daughter, that's insane. That's insanity. But that's what a lot of us are doing, and we're, we're letting them down. We're, we're not providing any guidance, any, you know, any teaching, nothing. And this is where it's gotten us. The music, the women, like, you used to be able to tell the difference between a regular woman and a stripper. You used to be able to tell the difference between a regular woman and a prostitute. You can't no more. I don't know who is who. I, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. So, no. But you need to embody those four things if you're going to have a healthy relationship. And I'm going to be frank. 75% of relationships today are toxic. They are not healthy. They are not healthy relationships. Yeah. So they're not healthy relationships. And all you're doing, it's like a generational curse. All you're doing is passing down dysfunction year after year after year. I, it stops with me. Like I said, my mom, I remember when I was talking to the kids about something, they were, they were like 11, 12, 13 or whatever. And my mom over her, she's like, why are you telling them that? Why are you sharing that? Because I don't believe in secrets. I don't believe in secrets. Yes, I tell my children the truth. Yes, I'm open, honest, transparent, and vulnerable. I share things with my kids because the, it, it stops with me. It stops with me, even now. Even now. I share things with my kids. They share things with me. They feel comfortable telling me things. They, they don't feel judged or condemned or, you know, they're going to get a strong, mm, mm, you know, they're going to get a strong, like, mm, I'm worried, I'm worried. Okay, as a counselor and therapist, I could not share everything. Really? I'm surprised. Say more. Say more about that. Because I, I'm a counselor and therapist, and that's all I do. <laughs> all I do is share and encourage other people to share. Like, that's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life, was becoming a professional helper. And look, y'all, it is, it is a very widely uh, known thing in the therapy and counseling community that 80% of us, 80% of counselors and therapists, we become counselors and therapists to heal our own selves, our own wounds, our own family, our own traumas, our own dysfunction. That's why 80% of us become counselors and therapists is we got our own stuff and we want to learn about it and we want to heal it. And then we want to help other people heal. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I read about this. I learned this tool. I learned this technique. I learned about this. I learned about that. And then we want to, we want other people to do it. So yeah, that's a, that's a widely known thing in our community is that most of us come from broken homes and, uh, you know, homes with addiction, homes with abuse and all kind of stuff. And we want to heal ourselves and help our family heal. And then we want to, we're passionate about helping other people heal. So, yeah, no, the dysfunction stops with me. I can't do it. And the, look, that's why there's family members right now. I don't have nothing to do with. I have zero. I have several family members right now on mute, on block. I don't, I don't have anything to do with it. I've, I've made it clear to them what my stance is, and I've made my boundaries clear. Like, this is what needs to happen for you and I to stay in communication. And they can't do it. And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> we good. We good. But you have to be trustworthy. 
There are a lot of people out here that they want something they can't provide. Listen to that. You want something you cannot even provide. That's a problem. The one thing that I will say about me is anything I want to receive, I can give. I can give it. Man say, I want to receive respect. Or I want to receive, you know, this or that. Or I want to receive home, whatever. Okay. I'm giving this. I'm giving that. Okay. Okay. Yep. I can mirror you. I can mirror you. And remember, I don't match negative energy. If negative energy is coming my way, I say, hey, this don't work for me. <laughs> like, I'm real quick to tell you that. This don't work for me. And then if it's not, you know, changing forthwith coming, I'm, I'm out. I do not match negative energy. I do not match toxic behavior. Okay? If toxic behavior and negative energy starts coming toward me, I'm going to pull your coattail. Like, hey, this don't work for me. All right? But if it don't change, I'm not going to match it. I'm just going to leave you alone. I was a counselor and pastor in same communities. I could not be confidential with her. She could not understand or hold it. Yeah, unfortunately, you chose the wrong person. Yeah. Like, we have got to choose well. And honestly, I'm, I'm you know, hey, I'm going to be vulnerable right now. I am not in a marriage. I am not in a relationship right now. Right now. Because I refuse. Like, I refuse to be in another toxic, unhealthy relationship. I refuse to be with someone I can't be open, honest, transparent, and vulnerable. I, I, I can't do it. I'm good. And that makes a lot of people mad that I will not choose a person that, you know, cannot meet me where I'm at. That makes a lot of per people mad. But a lot of people can't meet me where I'm at. The moment I become vulnerable, the moment I become open and transparent and I require that that, oh, well, well, what's going on? This is this is too much. This is too clingy. This is no. 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 And you, you're telling on yourself. You are telling on yourself. You're telling me I'm not emotionally available and I don't want to be with someone who's emotionally available. I can't go deep and I don't want to be with someone who can go deep. I don't want to be seen. And I don't want to see the other person. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I can't do the surfacey thing. I can't do the, you know, I'm an INFJ. I can't do the fake, you know, surfacey thing. I can't pretend. I'm not good at that. And I can't be neglected. I can't be talked to crazy. I can't be ignored. I catch all the feelings. Look, and I tell men that. Hey, we go out too many times in a row. We do this. We do that. We laugh. We joke. I'm going to get attached. <laughs> I'm going to get attached. I'm going to have expectations of you. You should have expectations of me. Look, I will be responsible for you. I want you to be responsible for me. That's like unheard of today. People don't want that. They don't want to be real. They don't want to be responsible for another person's heart. But yeah, if you if you can't do that, I'm good. Because that's all I know how to do. That's all I know how to do. I don't know how to do this stuff that y'all are doing. So I just don't participate. I'm going to be honest. I don't participate. And every now and again, a man will try to engage me or he'll come in my DM or He'll say hello when we out or whatever, right? He'll try to talk to me, and I'll talk to him because I'm open. But mm -mm, if you start going there, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> and look, I go, another one, another one. It's like, that's everybody. Everybody today is avoided. Everybody today is afraid. Everybody today, yeah, they want sex. They don't want love. They want sex. They don't want emotional intimacy. They want sex. They don't want to be responsible for your heart. So, no, nah, I'm good. I need y'all to really hear me on that one. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> like, I don't need, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. All right, I'm here, y'all. I got to run in.
and let these dogs out and and then get to my appointment. Have a wonderful Saturday. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay open to love.